Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Learn Nursing Easy. If you are the first time watching my video, please like, share, subscribe and click the notification button and stay tuned. Today let us see a condition on oncological disorder that is bone tumor. So bone tumor can arise anywhere in the bones that is at the surface or in the center of the bone where there is a bone marrow. So when the bone tumor keeps on growing, they can destroy the healthy tissue and weaken the bone and thereby patient can develop fractures. So bone tumors can be primary or secondary. So primary means when the cancer originates from the bone and its surrounding structures like cartilage, muscle fibers, fertility tissue and nerve tissue, we call it as primary bone cancer and they are also called sarcoma. Secondary bone cancers can metastasis from the other organs like breast, kidney cancers or lung cancer or stomach or colon cancer they can spread as cancer to the bone that is called as secondary bone cancers. In definition bone tumors can occur when the cancer cells keeps on dividing that is there is uncontrolled growth and it forms like a lump or mass or abnormal tissue then we call it as bone tumors they are benign and malignant. Benign is non-cancerous type of tumor it is not life threatening and it is present in a focal part focal is one specified area of the bone has cancer and it is not spreading to the other parts of the body and uh, depending on the size and type of tumor the treatment is done malignant tumors are cancerous they are life threatening and they can metastasize to the surrounding tissues and also to the distant organs and these tumors can be treated with combination of chemotherapy, radiation therapy and surgery. And coming to the classification of tumors, so they are classified into benign and malignant. In benign it is osteochondroma, osteoclastoma and endochroma. Malignant is osteogenic sarcoma, chondrosarcoma, having sarcoma and chordroma. Let's see one by one. So in benign tumors first is osteochondroma. So this most commonly occurs in the metaphyseal portion of the long bones commonly found in leg, pelvis and scapula and it is common in ages 10 to 25 and if malignant transformation occurs it can lead to chondrosarcoma and osteoclastoma. So this arises in the cancellous sense of the bones in the arms and the legs and it is very aggressive and it can spread to the lungs and this osteoclastoma even after surgery and chemotherapy there is high rate of recurrence and endochroma so this occurs in the intramedullary cartilage that is in the inner layer most commonly occurs in the hand and the feet and this cancer can also lead to malignant transformation and most commonly it's seen in 10 to 20 years malignant tumor there is osteogenic sarcoma so this is one of the primary metastatic bone cancer it occurs in 10 to 25 years of age and more commonly in the arms legs and the pelvis next is chondrosarcoma so it occurs in the cartilaginous cells most common in arms legs and pelvic bones and it is common in adults age 50 to 70 years and this occurs when there is proliferation of the benign osteochondroma tumors. It can change into chondrosarcoma which is a metastatic tumor. And next is saving sarcoma. So this also occurs in the medullary cavity of the bone. Most commonly it is found in the femur, humerus, pelvis and the TB. Next is the chordroma which is present in base of the skull and the vertebral bone. It is more common in the older age that is 50 to 70 years. Okay, coming to the causes of bone tumors, so in age, usually teenagers and elderly people are more risk of having bone tumors. And next is injuries and knocks. So patients who had a fall or accident can have high incidence of bone tumors because of the excess osteoblast activity in order to heal the broken bone and cancer treatment. So when person had some other cancer and they are undergoing radiation therapy for the cancer so exposure to radiation can also develop bone cancers and persons who are treated with chemotherapeutic drugs they can also develop bone marrow depression and they can go for osteosarcoma the person having other bones disease like Pagel's disease so where the recycling or remodeling of the bone is getting altered so because of that they are high risk of cancers Next, genetic factors, so if there is any family history of cancer, so due to the faulty gene mutation, the cancer can develop to the children. And ethnicity, so certain cancers are higher risk for white people than black people. 
and congenital disorder so if there is any children born with congenital disorder where the muscle and bone are weakened then the person can go for cancer and other environmental factors like occupational exposure of pesticides insecticides and any chemicals can develop cancer so in pathophysiology when there is any genetic mutation or environmental factors there is activation of oncogenes because there is deactivation of the tumor suppressor gene so there will be osteoblastic activity taking place that is development or multiplication of the dna of the bone tissue and there will be malignant proliferation of osteoblasts that is increase in the size and growth of the cancer cells and there will be tumorigenesis the where the osteo tissue will develop and grow faster and when they grow faster there is number of pathological process occurring so one there will be bone marrow depression so bone marrow is responsible for producing the blood cells so when the bone marrow is suppressed there will be decrease blood cell production and when there is uncontrolled growth of cancer cells these cancer cells will divide and invade the nearby structures and also they can spread through blood to the distant organs and they cause distance metastasis that means they can cause cancer elsewhere in the body and when the cancer cells grow and they compress the nearby bones and tissue they can cause inflammation and there will be severe bone pain the clinical manifestation we, while palpating we can feel a hard immobile mass which is a cancer tissue and there will be severe bone pain and the height of the client will be decreased because the cells do not grow longitudinally and soreness of muscles is seen and pressure or irritation when walking or doing doing some exercises and these persons are prone for pathological fracture that means even a small slip they can fall and break the bone because there is um, destruction of the bone or uh, weakening of the bone coming to diagnostic findings so in physical examination you can see swelling tenderness in the area of tumor and change in the color of the skin where the tumor is present and there can be a mass felt and x-ray shows saucer like erosion at the end of the bone so this shows that there is a cancer tissue and ct scan will show the size of the tumor and positron emission tomography is a nuclear test where you can see the metabolism of tumor cells in mri scan you can identify and distinguish the type of tumor cells and serum alkaline phosphatase and serum calcium levels will be elevated because of the excess bone destruction and calcium is coming and depositing in the blood and biopsy so here we can do a needle biopsy or a open biopsy where a bone tissue is uh, taken and we can confirm the presence of benign or metastatic cancer in the biopsy next is non surgical management so here radiation therapy so in this high dose of radiation either x rays or photon rays are given in order to kill the cancer cells or shrink the tumor cells and chemotherapy so this is in administered intravenously or we can give as a tablet orally so they heal the tumor cells and also prevent the spread of cancer cells into the blood stream and get metastasized to other part of the body the drug of choice in chemotherapy is methotrexate doxorubicin cisplatin cyclophosphamide bleomycin dactinomycin and isophosphamide Okay, in surgical management first we have to identify whether they are benign or a malignant tumor so in case of benign tumor we have to do white tumor excision so in this the tumor tissue that is bone sarcoma is removed along with a wide margin that is including the healthy tissue is removed so that accidentally some cancer cells will not be left behind okay and they reduce the risk of fracture and disability in metastatic cancers we do a limb salvage procedure so here the cancerous part of the bone with the muscles tendon nerves and nearby blood vessels are removed and the healthy tissue which is removed are replaced from the metallic implant or any prosthesis or from the patient's own bones elsewhere in the body or from a donor bone so here the limb is preserved so it is called as limb salvage procedure and the other procedure which is done is amputation so that means the whole 
leg arm or the area where the cancer is there that area is fully removed and we can replace a prosthetic limb and we have to teach the patient how to use the prosthetic limb palliative care so when the cancers are very severe metastatizing type and if surgery cannot be performed then we have to give palliative care so where the physical symptoms are treated and also emotional social and financial stress of the client is met so here we give treatment for both patient and families to cope up with the client's disability and also we help to maintain the quality of life and in palliative care we use medications like analgesics to treat the pain and also chemotherapy drugs if indicated and nutritional therapy will be done and relaxation technique emotional and spiritual support is given and if the client had some fracture then reduction and intentional fixation should be done in nursing management so patient will have severe bone pain so we have to administer analgesics and nsaids to relieve the pain and nutritional therapy we have to give high proteins vitamins and folic acid and i will charge should be maintained and advise the client to drink plenty of fluids this will prevent dehydration and also if the patient is having more calcium in the blood they can predispose to renal stones so we have to advise the client to drink more fluids and these patients due to decreased blood cell production they can go for thrombocytopenia and severe bleeding so you have to advise to use soft brushes and also avoid sharp objects like razors and scissors uh, to prevent injury and also im injection should be avoided in order to prevent bleeding tendencies and you have to meet the needs of the client and provide reassurance to relieve the anxiety and all the treatment options should be explained to the client in order to gain confidence and also to comfort and radiation therapy chemotherapy has so many side effects so you have to prevent the side effects and all measures should be done at the bedside if the client is having limitations with mobility if the client is going home with assistive ambulatory devices or a prosthesis then we have to demonstrate how to walk using them and therapeutic touch and spiritual therapy should be given in order to treat fear and depression and we have to monitor closely for any complications and treat the complications immediately and client's coping ability you have to identify and you have to meet the emotional needs of the client and you have to tell the client to take adequate rest and sleep and also follow regular physical exercises okay help the client to develop positive attitude towards treatment and recovery okay this is about the bone tumors i hope you have understood my class thank you for listening please like share subscribe and click the notification button and stay tuned